Somewhere in your high school or college math career, you may remember discussions about conic sections. You know, it's when your teacher took out the wooden model of a cone and showed how if you took different slices of that cone at different angles, you could make a circle, ellipse, parabola, and a hyperbola. If you do remember it, it's probably a hazy memory, something that was shoved into the recesses of your mind as another piece of information that you won't ever use again. Well, guess what? When we have a satellite orbiting around a planet, the orbit will usually take the shape of one of those conic sections. Drawing stars and exclamation points around them makes conic sections more fun. See? The simplest type of orbit is the circular orbit. Basically, the Earth is in the center, and the satellite flies around the Earth in a circular shape. What's nice about this type of orbit is that the satellite is moving about the Earth at a constant rate. This feature, along with some others, makes a lot of the mathematical computations dealing with orbits easier. However, there is a slight problem with circular orbits. In reality, no orbits are actual perfect circles. After circular orbits, we have elliptical orbits. Most satellites orbiting the Earth fall into this category. First, let's go into how to draw an elliptical orbit. An easy way of doing this is to place the loop string about two fixed points. These are now called foci. Foci, 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 foci. Pull the string tight and use a pencil or pen to loop around the foci. The resulting shape is an ellipse. In orbital mechanics, the planet is at one of the foci and the satellite moves in the ellipse around the planet. The trick is that the satellite doesn't move at a constant rate like it does in a circular orbit. The reason for this is that the Earth's gravitational pull is inversely proportional to the square of the distance between the Earth and the satellite. Let's talk about that some more in plain English using an example that everyone should be familiar with. If you ever played with a magnet, you'll notice that the closer you place a metal screw to the magnet, the stronger the magnet seems to be pulling on the screw. As you pull the screw away, the weaker the force of the magnet until eventually you don't feel any pull at all. When someone says that a force is inversely proportional, it's just a fancy way of saying the bigger the distance between the objects, the smaller the force. If they add that it's the square or cube of the distance, that just means that the force gets weaker at a faster rate. Got it? Good. Moving back to the elliptical orbit, I was just saying that the Earth's gravitational pull is inversely proportional to the distance between the Earth and the satellite. That means that if the satellite is close to the Earth, the Earth's gravity is going to be pulling on that satellite a whole lot more than when the satellite is far away from the Earth. The more pull there is on the satellite, the faster it's going to be traveling. That's why the satellite travels faster at perigee, when it's closest to the Earth, than when it's at apogee, when it's furthest from the Earth. Next, we have parabolic and hyperbolic orbits. We're just going to skip over parabolic orbits for now. They are weird. That leaves the fourth conic section, hyperbolic orbits. Basically, a hyperbolic orbit is not really in orbit around the planet. It's just flying by really fast. The orbit gets perturbed by the planet as it goes by, hence the knee you see here. But once it gets past the planet, it will just keep on going and you're not going to see it again unless it gets acted upon by another force. You'll see this type of orbit if you're looking at interplanetary missions. Comets and asteroids that pass near the Earth fall in this category as well, as long as you're looking at it from the perspective of the Earth. Comets and asteroids are actually in elliptical orbits about the Sun. If the object happens to pass near the Earth, then it will get perturbed by the Earth and you'll see a knee in their orbit. From the perspective of the Earth, it's in a hyperbolic orbit. However, from the perspective of the Sun, it's still in an elliptical orbit. The parabolic orbit is just like a hyperbolic orbit, except for one key difference. When the satellite reaches infinity with respect to its distance from the Earth, the satellite will stop moving. See? I told you it was weird. It's one of those things you'll see in theory that you'll never see in real life. Okay, we've covered a lot of material. Here's a quick recap. Circular orbits are easiest to work with, but aren't very realistic. You can use these for back of the envelope calculations if you know the real orbit is nearly circular. Just don't expect much accuracy. Most satellites have elliptical orbits. The Earth is at the foci, and the satellite will travel around the Earth at varying speeds. Hyperbolic orbits are for interplanetary missions. You won't be seeing the satellite again once it passes you. And parabolic orbits are like hyperbolic orbits, except they are weird. 
Thanks for tuning into Orbit Nerd, where we make astrodynamics easier. 